welcome back to the lab folks. So today we're going to have a look at capacitors, what they are and what their physical structure is like. It's not that difficult to understand actually. So if we look at a capacitor, basically it can be thought of as two metal plates of area A with a distance between the two plates. We call that D. So the capacitance of a plate capacitor like this is simply E naught. E naught is the uh, electric constant or the permittivity of free space. Uh, times A over D. Now there's another way to define the capacitance too. Uh, capacitance equals the charge Q over the voltage. So if you get a one fired capacitor, pile a coulomb of charge on it, which is a lot of charge, uh, you'll get one volt across that capacitor. That is kind of like a, an external way of looking at capacitors. The, the real way to look at capacitors is this way. So all capacitors are, are built like this, uh, no matter what they are. It's just some of them have, uh, if you go over here, some of them have what we call a, a dielectric in them. And that, that would be most capacitors, except for those, you know, those old fashioned radio tuning capacitors. With ceramic capacitors, it's little metal plates that are separated by little ceramic plates. Electrolytic capacitor is the very same. It's got, it's got two metal foils that have been treated, chemically treated, to have different properties. And then they're separated by a sheet of paper in which is soaked with an electrolyte. Film capacitors have some sort of film between the, the, the metal plates, or the, the film itself may be metallized. Some other things you might want to discuss, like if you put two capacitors in series, that the capacitance drop. If you put two 10 UF capacitors in series, you'll end up with a 5 UF capacitor that's capable of twice the voltage. And uh, you might think, well, why does that happen? Well, basically, when, when you put two capacitors in series, you've got uh, coming down to one capacitor, and that's the way capacitors are drawn, like two metal plates. And then you have another capacitor. And this one has a, a spacing of D, and this one has a spacing of D. And the area is the same for them because they're both the same capacitor. But now you have a spacing of 2D, right? So what happens when, when you have a 2D? What happens here? Well, if we look at the field between the two plates, it's equal to the voltage over the distance. If we put two plates in series, basically doubling the distance. So then we have E is equal to V over 2D. Because the field is one half, you only need half as much charge to create that field. So to get the same voltage across it, half the amount of charge needs to be put onto the plate. So it's at half the capacitance, according to this formula here. But uh, what, about, uh, what about this? In this case here, the dielectric constant K has a similar effect to reducing the distance between the plates. Now, if we put a dielectric in there with a dielectric constant, let's say four, so now you, you, the capacitance goes up because you have then weakened the electric field by a factor of four. That means that you can now cram on four times as much charge onto it to get to the same voltage. We can have a look at this. What these are, they're just uh, copper pores on both sides, 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter foil layers, and between them is sandwiched a 0.6 millimeter uh, layer of FR4 fiberglass. Little holes along the side here where I can solder in wires to connect to either one plane or the other. Uh, what I've done also is I've made up a couple of uh, nice demonstrations for you. So in this case, I've, I've soldered in wires that go to for the faces we can't see, so the inside faces, and I've put in these little shims of acrylic in here to separate the the metal foil layers by a certain amount. It looks like it's about uh, maybe uh, one, 1 1.5 millimeters or so. It, it doesn't really matter. We're not going to do the calculation on these. But we're going to make some observations. So what I'm going to do is, uh, is, is I'll get a meter up here and uh, here are the leads to it. And we're going to connect this up and have a look at it. And we're going to see what the capacitance is of this. Okay, so it looks like we've got about 60 picofarads. Uh, with the way this is laid out. So this is this is just strictly physical dimensions here. We've got a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeters of copper separated by whatever that is, 1.5 millimeters. And you could do this calculation here. I'm not going to bother doing it. It, it. Whatever it is, it comes out to 59 picofarads. We'll do the calculation later on a more interesting one. But now if I if I stick these two in there as well, we should double the distance between them and the capacitance should change. Uh, according to what I was saying here, it should go down by a factor of two almost. So let's, uh, let's have a look at that. Let's take this one apart here and stack on some more of this plastic to get twice the distance. Oh, 
Okay, now you can see that we have twice the distance between the two plates. All right, we're down to 31 picofarad, going from 60 down to 31, approximately a factor of two. Now we're gonna be a little bit off, I think because of this plastic here that we're using, does indeed have a, a dielectric effect. So that's, these little areas here are, are gonna throw it off. Now, let's see what that dielectric is. So we, we, can, uh, we can do that too. What I'm gonna do here is, is I'm gonna almost fill this thing with some of this stuff. So we're going back down to a single layer and we've got a single layer completely covered, well, almost completely covered with this uh, plastic sheet, this acrylic sheet. So it's gonna act as our dielectric. Now we had 60 picofarads before with just the, the air gap on these, these little bits. So we should see this uh, go up considerably more than 60 picofarads. And indeed we're there, we're at 95. So judging by the area that we have here, so we have about maybe, what about 80% of the area covered with this and it's gone up by 60, 70%. I'd say that the, the dielectric constant on, on this acrylic is somewhere between uh, one and a half and two. Now, what's my other demonstration? My other demonstration is, uh, it's just using one of these plates all by itself, but using the two different sides. So like I said, it's, it's only 0.6 millimeters between them. The dielectric conscious of the FR4 here is quite high. It's 4.5 according to the manufacturer. We did these calculations here. So this is basically just a statement of, of what I've been talking about for capacity. We calculate capacitance using the physical properties with the following equations. So we're going to work in picofarads here rather than farads. So capacitance picofarads equals E0, which is the permittivity of free space. Uh, times k, which is the dielectric constant of the material in between, multiplied by the area divided by the distance of separation. Capacitance here, CPF is capacitance of picofarads. Our use of E0 is the permittivity of free space in picofarads per meter rather than farads, so we don't have this times 10 to the minus 12 to deal with. k is our dielectric constant, as I said, uh, the manufacturer of the boards told me it was 4.5. A is the area of the plates, in our case it's 0 0.01 square meters. D is the separation of plates. In our case, that's 0 0.0006 meters. So if we do all that calculation, we find that uh, our capacitance in picofarads should be equal to this, which is equal to 664. And uh, so let's hook this one up and see what the uh, meter tells us. 695.5. Five. So I'd say we did good. We've shown here that all this stuff purely based on the physical properties of the capacitor, provides us with a great approximation of the actual capacitance of the capacitor. This thing has got a couple of neat properties that uh, you might say, oh, well, that's not a very useful capacitor being a big chunk like that. Well, it doesn't have a big chunk like that. I mean, you, you could make it in uh, pieces a quarter of that size and then stack them up. You can make it in pieces an eighth of that size and make you know something that's maybe two centimeters on a side or a centimeter and a half on a side and have a, a block capacitor. Well, why would you want to do that? Well, this FR4 is a, is a pretty good dielectric. It's got a very high dielectric strength. So the dielectric strength is 1,500 volts per mil. So we've got 0.6 millimeters, which is 23.6 mil. So this, this capacitor here is good for about 35,000 volts. I got five of these for $4 US, and that included the shipping. So that's about 80 cents a piece. I defy you to go out and find a 35,000 volt, 700 nanofarad, or let's round it off to common value, 680 nanofarad capacitor for 80 cents. So if you are dealing with um, high voltages, this is an economical way to do some experimentation. The sky's the limit, like normal PC board is 1.6 millimeters thick. That would be up at around 100,000 volts dielectric strength. And I'd like you to look at the ESR there. You can see it's about, uh, about 12 ohms, bouncing around a little bit as I move my hands around here. Like if I put my hands on this, everything changes. And uh, this here is a 680 nanofarad 50 volt capacitor. And let's see what its ESR is. Well, 51, 52 ohms. This has got uh, four times better ESR rating. And this is 50 volts. This is 35,000 volts. So it's about uh, 800 times better voltage capability 
Of course, there's a size difference. But like I said, I mean, I, you know, if you're doing something in a university where you're dealing with very high voltages or you're doing just doing some general experiments where you're dealing with very high voltages and you needed a very high voltage capacitor, rather than going out and spending dollars on it, you, you can make yourself one just like this. And uh, like I say, all capacitors are, are basically exactly the same as this. Uh, the only ones that are, would be considerably different would be um, tantalum capacitors, which don't use layers like that. They use uh, a, a sintering process that greatly increases the surface area, and then they cover that with a, an oxide layer, which is an insulating dielectric layer. So they're a little bit more complicated. This is how capacitors are made, just what we did here. All right, folks, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.